to try to get a little time with you tonight. I know there's a lot of questions. I know there's a lot of concerns. We have them too. Um, these last couple of days have uh, been life changing, as I said in my post earlier. For all of us. I spent three days ahead of time boarding everything up that I could. Um, our house is old, it's not in the best shape. So I knew I had to do everything I could to protect it. Tuesday before the storm, when they announced a mandatory evacuation for the island, I left at about 7.15 in the morning, took a quick video of the home, um, and I drove over to West Palm Beach to my sister's house, and that's where I hunkered down. The storm surge is estimated now between 8 and 15 feet, depending on where the, where the properties were located. And of course, there was extensive flooding throughout the island. For me, it was surreal watching from there because they had the cameras on the island. So as the storm was going, well, everything's all right. The wind's coming in. But then once you saw water coming in, Lindgren, I think, was the first area you could see from the Sandoval cameras, started making it a little real. And then when you saw the water going down to uh, Periwinkle, where the bank and Jerry's is, that made it real, very real when the camera was just barely above the water and then it finally went out. <laughs> we just had a bad feeling you sometimes you have that gut feeling and my wife and I we thought you know maybe we get like a few feet of storm surge on the island and some 130 mile an hour winds but we never thought it would be like this it looks like a bomb went off having deployed so many times to these they're all bad but every place is unique and every situation is unique and so with Ian in Southwest Florida, a different part of the state, different demographics, many coastal uh, homes and businesses, it's, it's really important to kind of get your eyes on that so that we know as leaders and when we make decisions what we're dealing with. As you've seen the aerial photos and the news reports on the ground, it's pretty severe. Getting here was a challenge just because you had to find a boat. We didn't really know anybody with a boat. So you go on Facebook and you just try and find phone numbers, people that might have one. It, it looks so much better now than what anybody could imagine. It was, everything was decimated. There was about six to eight inches of mud, like this silty, slippery mud that was covering the entire island. It, was, it made it almost impossible to get around your survival mode kind of hits in, right? You know, you're like, we gotta find a bike. What can we, what can we find to get us there and back? Cause this is probably isn't gonna be our first trip. And you start going through the rummage and you just start finding stuff. And you're like, this will be helpful. This will be helpful. This will be helpful. Mayor said every single property had destruction. Every single property had destruction. You didn't believe her when she said it until you got here. And every single piece of property on this island had some sort of destruction to it. It's good to know uh, how bad is it just roofs off or is there debris and, and other factors that we that we really need to consider and how that would translate into operating quickly and efficiently to help people you know the little hope that you had as you walk down the street you're like it starts to fade and you see your front door knock in and you're like all right you just start taking pictures and videos and again go into another set of survival mode. Yeah. There's no other way to say it. And yet you're here like, fixing your home. Like... Yeah, yeah, we got big plans for what it could be. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of potential here. Good yeah. bones. It's good structure. Um, you know, it's at the end of the day it's your it's your home, right? So you try to protect it as much as you can. In the temporary roofing mission that we get from FEMA it really is about mass care. It's about taking care of as many people as, as we can. And so keeping people in their homes or allowing them to get back into their homes as quickly as possible adds to the normalcy of, uh, of the population. Plus it allows them to, to, to kind of restart their lives and start working on um, you know, getting a permanent roof, um, many of the houses require more, more extensive renovations. Some get completely gutted. What it does is it keeps them at home. It allows their children to go back to school, which is very, very important. It allows the community to enjoy a sense of, of being and their economy of that, of that community as the stores open. If they didn't have that, they would be displaced 
uh, possibly all over the state and that community probably has an economic impact that might last for much longer than, than you know, a normal recovery if they didn't have the opportunity to stay in their homes. Day 16 or 17, um, the place was pretty busy. And it, it wasn't necessarily residents, it was workers on here doing a lot of the work. Um, removing debris from roads, and then the power company working on the power lines, things like that. And then, here, what'd you say, it's day 30 today, right? Yeah, day 30 today. Day 30 today, like, everybody, and I don't want to say everybody, a lot of people have gutted their homes or started that process, removed the furniture at least, and the roadsides were just snow piles of debris. And here we are, they've already come through a single, uh, with at least one pass to clean all that up. So my eyes, like, I don't know how they're doing it, but they're going incredibly fast. Uh, and progress has been amazing. Our community is amazing. Over the last few years, we've had a lot of young families that have moved to the island that we've spent a lot of time with and our kids are all the same age and we are here because of them. We want that life for them, this, this little island life that we have here. We want them to grow up in this safe environment and it's just, I mean, Sanibel, if you've been here before, I mean, if you vacationed here, even if you've just driven over the causeway one day, I mean, it just hits you. Before the storm, I mean, this place is paradise. It's amazing. And it still is, and I know it will be. I, I mean, I can see the, see the buds growing back on the trees now. I mean, there was nothing here a couple weeks ago, and I mean, it's, it's, you can see it starting to come back. It's just gonna take a while. It certainly is exponential if you didn't have Blue Roof. The Corps does an excellent job of executing the Blue Roof mission. I'm not saying that somebody else couldn't do it, but uh, with our partnership with FEMA, we have developed good procedures in a, in a process. Not everybody was 100% happy. We understand, understand that. Um, but uh, 20,000 roofs in the, you know, in the short period of time on Ian allowed those people to start their path back to normalcy. I'm not sure that you could you know, monetize that in a manner that would be meaningful.